when we see potential, we try to make it out to be something. And it's like, sometimes you can't fight with that because people don't always see their own potential. So I saw so much of him. So I'm like, okay, well, I can make him a better person. Like, I don't care. Like, he got a pass, but I got a pass too. So we gonna work this out. In this segment, we are going to talk about, did you marry the wrong person? We're going to discuss what makes a strong marriage and should you get married younger or older and so much more. Today's guest is a mother of three children and she also has a skincare line that I want us to discuss as well. So we're going to talk about in the show. Bravehearts community, let's show some love to Jerrica. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing fine. How are you? Hi, everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Well, finally got a chance to connect. We were conversing on Twitter and I, I brought up this question about marrying, the possibly marrying the wrong person. And uh, the conversation went on from there. So now here we are recording this segment. So let's just jump into this. You talked about uh, we talked about marrying the wrong person. And at what point did you realize that you married the wrong one? I have a list. <laughs> so I'm going to like make it quick, um, but not too quick because I want to give y'all some detail. But um, I knew I married the wrong person. Let's just start off by saying I basically eloped. Um, it's kind of like if you ever watched the movie Selena, it's like what her and Chris did. They just ran off. Nobody knew. That's what I did. Um, I didn't want anybody to know because I knew that people would change my mind. And me, I'm kind of like, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. So that was one thing. The second thing was the two witnesses, like one of my cousins, um, the second cousin, like one of my best friends, somebody who I trust on my life. And she reneged, like she was not for it. She did not support me. And that kind of just made me feel like, I don't care what the situation is. If you are for me and for, and for me and only me, like regardless if you support or not, be there for me. And honestly, I heard what she was saying. It made perfect sense. So I can't knock her for that, but I just wanted to have her there for me. And we fell out because of that. Like, we even tried to make amends, but it really wasn't no making the situation better, and especially because the situation got swept under the rug. Like, it was something that she didn't want to talk about or even apologize to me for. And of course, you know, they say um, drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. We were having like a little drink or whatever. And she apologized to me, but it kind of like went over my head. So that was two, um, three, I want to say the backlash, like the hate that I received from like being in this marriage and people would probably be like, well, what do you mean hate? Like, I really felt like everybody, like, dislike me especially from like his point of view you know like um I want to say it's just like I received so much so so much backlash and I feel like it was from things that he did that made me pay for it but it was just horrible and then um the next thing I want to say, the abuse, um, just like to the point, straight to the point, the last couple of months of me being his wife, it became so unpredictable. Like I never knew what bag he was going to come out of. And that was very scary for me. Um, I just remember a lot of times, like, you know, somebody is not going to make it out of the situation. Like somebody's either going to you know, end up in jail or dead. And I don't want that to be me. So I had to make a decision and I couldn't just, you know, like come flat out and tell him my moves because I was, I'm gonna be honest, like I'm not saying he's the worst person, but I was terrified. So I didn't 
tell him anything, but I feel like I've made the steps that I needed to take so that I could be all right for me and my children. And like the last couple of months, very unpredictable. The fights became like more frequent. The verbal abuse became more frequent. And I just knew like we were growing in two different directions. It was time for me to just cut the whole situation loose. And I know that God and universe was with me because those last couple of months, like it was different. And my aunt that passed away, like she transitioned. Um, her daughter came to stay with me. And I knew right then and there, like, this is God, like, saving me. Because most abusers, they're not violent around people. They're violent when it's just you and them. So for somebody to be there with me, I didn't feel alone. Like, I wasn't scared. I feel like my throat chakras had opened up a little bit because I was, you know, speaking for myself. Like, I normally would back down, but it's like, hey, I got some help here. So I'm about to say and do where I should have done a long time ago mm -hmm. and I can just remember sitting in the car with her like, like like breaking down and just telling her like I thank you so much because I really felt like I was just walking into my own like death trap and I thank my aunt so much I thank God so much because I don't know where that situation could have led either one of us and we both have children so yeah that was all I knew I married the wrong one. That was my list right there. Yeah, and, and as I'm listening, I, I want to ask what caused, what made you and your ex-husband elope in the first place? Did you like, did you just automatically know that this was wrong and you just kind of took a chance or what? take me back to the, the mindset of Jerrica at that time? Oh my God, the mindset at that time was just like, I don't care. I want to be with this person. Like, I love him. And he got some stuff that we got to work on, but I'm willing to work through this with him because just like, I don't even think this is a woman thing. I think this is people in general. When we see potential, we try to make it out to be something. And it's like, sometimes you can't fight with that because people don't always see their own potential. So, I saw so much of him, so I'm like, okay, well, I can make him a better person. Like, I don't care. Like, he got a pass, but I got a pass too, so we gonna work this out. And I was like, forget everybody else. We just gonna go do this. And the crazy thing is, prior to even going to Elo, it literally took two days. Like, we had a conversation. I was like, I want to get married. And <laughs> He was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, like, I think we should wait a minute because, you know, basically I'm not ready. And I was like, well, I don't care if you're ready or not. Like, you know what? We, we gonna do this. And I should have listened to him. I should, I really should listen to him. And I, I don't knock him. I ain't never told nobody this, but I don't, I don't knock him at all because I should have listened to him. It would have saved us so much. Like, really and it was like the two days like the next two days we were married and the crazy thing is I never say this also like the whole like little moment was getting recorded and I could see like on his face that he had so much over his face like so much guilt like like he was thinking about something mm -hmm. and that sent chills to me like the, that day after leaving the courthouse, it sent chills to me like, oh my God, he did not want to do this. But he told me, he 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 said that he would, but he said he wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. Same thing. So the crazy thing is like the gag, like this is the past. So, and we're in here now, but like a whole year after that, I have found out that he has slept with someone like, <laughs> like the night before we got married and it was like a year after and I was like you know like I went back and was like oh that's why you had that look on your face because you knew like this wasn't right for either one of us mm -hmm. and like I said I should listen to him I should listen mm -hmm. so and this, this is very interesting thanks for the exclusive this is a first <laughs> 
this is a first break. I ain't never told anybody none of this. <laughs> so this is an exclusive. So do and, and I don't want to generalize all women, but sometimes I hear this from women. I'm not saying it's all, but do mm-hmm. women really believe that they can change men? Like, do oh women my really God. believe that? Yes, they do. And it's so ridiculous to think that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because, you know, in my, in my short 45 years of life, I've realized that mm-hmm. you can't change people, but you can influence them. There you go. Right. And when you influence them, that can make shape whatever, like form them to be who they are destined to be. Like it can give them that motivation, that push, but it's definitely not going to change them. Yeah. And then the scary part about that is they, the switch might come on for them and then you get to a certain place with them and then they leave you. Or you just get to a point where you have put in so much faith and so much work and you realize that you don't want that anymore. And either way, it's like the same feeling because like, what I put in so much time with this and somebody else is going to get maybe better, maybe worse, Mm. but it's still the fact like I did that. Yeah. No, I understand because I, I was married for 15 years before going through a divorce and I'm a better person now the second time around getting married than I was the first time. I like when I was first time I got married, I was 24, but I learned so much. And I think the thing is I learned where I went wrong. So, <laughs> so I think <laughs> because I've learned where I went wrong, I believe that I was able to heal faster because people say, well, how do you get married in six mm-hmm. months? Because, and, and I tweeted about it earlier, mm-hmm. my marriage was over before it was actually over. Tell me about it. Like, you hit with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I just I just think it's interesting because I've heard that I've interviewed some other people before and we kind of talked on the same thread about do women believe that they have enough power to i believe a woman can really influence i do believe that Mm -hmm. but he has to be willing and open that's the thing it's the wanting to do the work on your own if you refuse to do it then no you Mm -hmm. can't change a person yeah yeah i agree what do you think makes a strong marriage A strong marriage needs communication. People think it's sex, but I think it's communication because how are we going to connect other ways if we can't start first by having a conversation? And the thing with communication is, with communication, there comes comprehension. Like some people don't even comprehend what you're even saying to them to even start the the conversation. And that's scary. Because it's like, I'm steady, you know, trying to talk to you and you haven't even begun to take me serious. So like, but communication is like the main thing that's going to get you through so much, so many levels that you need to unlock with your partner. It's going to help y'all so much. And if you are refusing to, you know, communicate, then I should. I seriously recommend like some form of counseling. Um, people think that they don't need that or in the end they go into their marriage and that's how their marriage fell in the first place because you didn't realize like, well, for one, you are your own person. So you need separate, maybe separate counseling to, you know, heal wounds that you never healed or never even discussed or shared with anyone. So you need that proper time for yourself. Then here you are, you get with somebody, then y'all get married, and it's like, well, we ain't even, y'all ain't got no foundation or anything. So, yes, communication. And for the people that think, like, they just gonna get married, they ain't gonna have no issues, they gonna be ready to talk. Like, when it's time to talk, nobody wants to talk. So, yes, yes, sometimes you do need a mediator and, and 
for whatever reason, a lot of people don't believe that, but communication is key. If you want your marriage to last, which I'm in my second marriage and I do want my marriage to last, so I am heavy on communication. I don't care if you don't want to talk, let's talk, let's communicate. If you feel like you're scared to talk, because some people kind of like get timid when it's time to talk, write it on some paper. Like, I don't want you to text it to me, but write it down. We can start there because once you write it down, I can break it down. I can start asking you questions. So communication, everybody, communication. Mm -hmm. But what if, I'm just throwing this out there, what if that person doesn't want to talk at that time? Like, because you might be ready to talk because I know this was an issue for my wife and I in our early in our marriage Mm -hmm. and I would want to talk. And she's like, I don't want to talk right now. (laughs) You know, so. Well, that's my husband right now. That's my (laughs) husband. It's a lot of times where I want to talk and he'd be like, he he thinks it's a form. It's like nagging. And maybe it's how I deliver the message to him. Not maybe I know. <laughs> well, and, and but, I, that's what I was gonna say. It's the approach. I think it's the the yes, approach that the makes the difference. Definitely. So he he's like he not confrontational at all. He thinks I'm very confrontational. <laughs> so if he don't want to talk at the moment, like for the most part, what I'll do is I'll back down. Like okay, you don't want to talk. That's fine. But we gonna have this conversation and. And nine times out of ten, like really with him, like he go at his own pace. So I gotta just like let him come around. Mm-hmm. He'll we'll eventually get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one key to great communication is uh, the approach. Mm-hmm. But then I also believe it's like the atmosphere. It depends on what we have going on. Mm-hmm. If we got kids running around the house, all these different things. you remarried did you have any fear going into the second marriage and if so what was that fear i had no fear going into my second marriage because i had already done it Mm. Um, and i kind of knew at this point what i wanted um so i i had no fear at all like the fear that i had it had already happened Mm. my worst fear happened my worst fear was getting a divorce. That was something that I didn't want to do at all. Why? Because prior to the divorce and all of the confusion, it was like there was so much like weighing down on me. Things that I didn't even think were like, oh, I'm just getting a divorce. Like, it felt like I was a failure. Like I started reaching back in my life, like even from childhood. And it's like, why, you know, like, why do I feel this way? Like, I feel like a complete failure. I felt like people were going to be talking about me and laughing at me. But the crazy thing was people were already doing that, but it felt different actually going through that. That was my number one fear like I don't want to get married just to get a divorce and I think the reason why I felt so bad and I felt like a failure was Mm -hmm. because not because I let myself down or because I let my husband down I felt like I had let God down like I feel like I made a pact I made a promise like this is something that I said before God this is something that I want to be able to see through and the crazy thing is like through my divorce, like them last couple of months, God was talking to me. He was like, you know, I don't want to see you suffering. Like I'm not the one that's going to make you suffer. You know, people cause their own hills. Like you suffering because of you. It's time for you to do something different, baby. You know, I love you. Like, let's do something else. And, you know, he just kept like, at that point, I felt so strong. I felt like I'm ready to do this. But it took so long, and then the pandemic came, so it kept getting pushed back. So, yes, my worst fear was getting divorced. I already done that, so I went into my second marriage, like, 
we're going to work. We don't have nothing else to lose. Like for you, you haven't done it before, but I have. Mm -hmm. And that's another issue too. Like he never been married before and I have. So it's like I have to have patience for him. And I get so kind of like, oh, I don't have not already done this. And it's like, I can't do that to him because he, like, I know that he can, you know, be a husband that he got what it takes, but he never done this. So it's like, you know, baby steps on him a little bit, but <laughs> I be so into like, mm -mm, come on, let's do this. So. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's good because. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm 12 years older than my wife mm -hmm. and this is her first marriage so this is my second one right so we're in the same boat so yep. I, I understand where you're coming from <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's very important is for us to give our spouse grace and space to grow yes that's you know? very important so that makes a strong marriage too y'all yeah, right. You got to have grace and give them space to grow because I'm pretty sure the man that you married, your husband now, he's not the same person that you met when y'all first met or even when you married. I'm pretty sure he's changed from that time being. So you got to adjust as well. Ooh, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. So. We gotta we gotta give each other grace and space to grow. Uh, I think some relationships don't even last long enough to allow people to grow. No, they don't. And I don't know. People are so like quick to give up, and this this is just all bad because like nothing's gonna happen overnight. You gotta give it some time, and a lot of people think like okay, my partner tripping on me, let me go out and get another, well, that partner gonna be tripping too, so it's like, you really just have to, like you said, space and grace, seriously. Yeah, yeah, and like you said, you can go, you can jump in another relationship, but if you haven't fixed your issues, you bringing those issues into another relationship, and you think this person is gonna treat you different, but it's gonna end up the same, because <laughs> you are you with your baggage. Yep. <laughs> you know, so I even heard, uh, I forgot the term they call it, but it's talking about men going to different countries to marry their wife or something like that, going, you know, leaving the country. And I'm just like, I don't care if you marry a woman from Zimbabwe. <laughs> oh, they have TV shows like that. And I cannot, I, my husband be watching those shows actually and his mom and I just can't get into it. like I'm not about to go to Japan to find my husband I'm not going to do that and get married in 90 days yeah do you know how hard marriage is <laughs> that's a joke yeah marriage is easy to get in hard to get out of Okay, I be telling people all the time, like it's like you uh getting into some type of mafia or something. It's like, <laughs> yeah, right. Seriously, yeah. And some people they don't they don't want to take the necessary steps to get married. I remember one time I was on Clubhouse, so I could I'm I'm dating myself, right? I'm on, I'm on Clubhouse mm -hmm. one time, and this guy or him and his girlfriend were on Clubhouse, and he was telling me why they shouldn't get married she wanted to but he didn't mm -hmm. he's like it's just a piece of paper and all sort of stuff you know and i'm just like really you sign a piece of paper for everything else you sign a contract to your house or to your car or yeah right and he's trying to tell her like i don't want the government in my business i was like okay no, a lot of people think like that too but I'm sorry. I'm going to just put this out there. Like, I'm the type of woman that I am, I'm not doing common law, nothing. I'm not going to put that in my mind that it's just a piece of paper because, for one, marriage is so much deeper than that. And on top of that, people do prenups and all of this. But here it is. It's like, if I'm going to be with you, I want everything legit across the board. Like, 
I want to have a strong foundation to where if something happens to either one of us, I'm okay. My children are okay. You know, so marriage is way in the time, not even just the time, it's the mental, um, your, everything, yes, like mentally, all of that, like marriage is very, very, very deep. Um, so to have that feeling towards it, I don't know. It's hard work, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marriage, yeah, it takes work. I, I heard a guy say the other day, he's talking about, he, 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 he said, my marriage, I didn't just wake up like this. He said, no, <laughs> my marriage took work. He was like, you know, and, and marriage is, it's a living organism. And if you don't feed it, if you don't take care of it, it's going to die. But mm -hmm. a lot of people like to put their marriage and relationships on autopilot thinking that, okay, I got my boo. I'm good now. Yeah, and when the same things that got you your boo, you got to keep doing that. Like, <laughs> you know, you can take a break. Yeah. But definitely you have to keep doing what it takes to, like, just how you got your boo, you got to keep your boo. Mm -hmm. um it doesn't matter matter if you got married or not that's where people go wrong too they think i'm married now so here it is this is it no there's more you gotta keep going and there's going to be so many hard days so you're gonna have to keep going because you're gonna have to get to those strong places and not just leave the other partner to sink or you know y'all have to make do this together it, it's both of y'all mm -hmm. yeah and you know i was thinking you said something earlier that I, I thought about when you talked about therapy and having a third party and i was on twitter one day and i i tweeted about how my wife and i have three therapists mm -hmm. i said i have i have mine she has hers her individually and then we have a marriage therapist we see together. Mm -hmm. And and there are people and tweeting me like, why? That's Don't you think y'all are doing too much? And I'm like, no, because you have personal issues that you have to work on as well as your spouse. Yes. And when and you that's get to... Not, hmm? Go ahead. That's not wrong at all. It, you need that. And you need to go somewhere and be able to vent to someone that's not going to be biased. Like, if somebody is coaching y'all, mm -hmm. that means y'all are doing the work and y'all are doing what it takes to stay in y'all marriage. Not putting on a facade or, you know, trying to live this life that y'all want people to believe. Y'all are doing the work. So y'all getting coached. I feel comfortable with you coaching me because I know that you're doing the necessary steps that it takes to prove to yourself, your wife, your union period that y'all want longevity, y'all want it to last. This is, that means a lot to you. So yes, you need you need to do all of that. And I'm taking this second time around very serious. It's like I'm not gonna lie, like some days it get too hard. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just gonna put this out here. I know I told my husband like 50 million times, like, um, I'm getting a divorce. I'm sorry, I've, I've said that. But it's just, I get so upset. And it's like, <laughs> like it's, oh my God, seriously. <laughs> you need it. You just need it. <laughs> But I'm not divorced. I'm going to do what it takes to actually not just coexist, but to actually love one another. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a huge, huge thing to like every day. Y'all not going to like each other, but every day y'all, if y'all have that love, y'all can always bounce back. Y'all can always make it work because love is very strong especially if you are committed to it so yeah i i totally agree i totally agree do you think people should get married younger or older i think people be in that i'm the one that eloped <laughs> so 
I feel like you should do whatever you want to do. How, like, how old were you at that time? I was 25. Okay. And and the funny part is I had someone like way from the past. I was going to get married at 17. And you know who influenced that? My grandmother. My grandmother has been married twice as well. My grandmother got married at the age of 17. And nobody thought nothing of it. Like, this is what you are supposed to do. Yeah. When you meet your one, you think you found your one. And this is somebody that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Do it. Like, there's going to be people that may say don't or this is the wrong thing to do. But do it. You don't know where this can take you. It may lead you somewhere you don't want to go. But it may also lead you to the best places of your life. So do it. And the crazy part is, like, my grandmother also, like, one of her best friends, her best girl buddies, like, she got married at the age of 75. So it really, yes, it really does not matter. Love does not have no age limit or no face or no none that. When you love somebody, you love them. And yes, she was 75. Her husband was younger than a little bit, maybe like, maybe a couple of years. I want to say he had to be at least like early or early 60, like late 50, like somewhere he was just at her. And he didn't have much to offer her. Like she had, she was set at 75, like she was good. And you would not believe her family was like so mad at her. People stopped talking to this 75 year old lady because she got married to this man that didn't have much. And we were all like, what kind of stuff is this? She might leave her tomorrow. If this is who she want to be with, then let her be with this man like so it don't got nothing to do with no age or no none of that like you gonna go through the same thing so yes my grandmother was 17 her best friend was 75 do your thing wow. <laughs> that's yeah. interesting yeah i agree because I, I did a show before i had a, a guest and we talked about getting married younger and older and there are pros and cons to it i believe um but I think the biggest issue is us defining love. Like, I think love looks different when you're younger and love, it looks different when you're older. Oh, that's true. Why? Because like when you're younger, I think you more like, I don't know. I think when you're younger, you more so you don't think. It's like you just do and that's what I did but I, I'm gonna be honest like I wanted to do it so I didn't care what nobody else said and I don't care how young I was like I I started dating him when I was 22 so most of my youth went to him you know mm -hmm. but it doesn't it does not matter like yeah love who you love seriously yeah because and and i know with the second time around when my wife when we got married it was only four four of us uh four or five of us we didn't invite anybody i mean we we told we told everybody but we we just did it like it was me her she dressed herself at the wedding okay she dressed herself <laughs> she dressed herself it was the pastor, our photographer, and a witness. And that was it. And we did it at, I mean, at his church, at the pastor's church. So it was just us. Y'all you know did it the right way. Y'all made sure that God was somewhere up in there. So that was that was very good. And I'm very proud of y'all <laughs> for making sure that God is centered because you really need him centered. And uh, I did the same thing, but the, the I messed up the first time with the cousin. So <laughs> the second time I took my granddaddy. <laughs> well, well, here was here was the thing. Now looking at it now, I'm still glad that we did what we did, but mm -hmm. there were some people that really weren't for us. You know. Now get it. Now think about this: when you're at a wedding you have two families mm -hmm. and from a biblical 
from a biblical standpoint, I don't want to get too deep into it, but it's kind of like this whole covenant thing when they will walk through an animal, cutting the animal, and they would walk down in between the animal, and that's like that that was the covenant, right? So it's like this family and that family on each side, y'all walk down the aisle. That's like this covenant y'all making, but we have to think some people not for you. They just there to eat the food. They just there to talk about you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you have to Praise the Lord. I thought that I was the only person in the world <laughs> that thought that way. No. Like I didn't want I wanted my moment to be special. I wanted it to be intimate. Like I'm Aquarius, so I'm I'm a people I'm person, Aquarius but too. I'm whoa, whoa. <laughs> but it's like I I love people, but I'm also like I try to get away from people pleasing. So it's kind of like I I didn't want a lot of people uh, to be around. I didn't want a wedding. I I I've had actually had people laugh at me and be like, "Well, he, you wasn't even worth a wedding." Like things like that. Oh, that knockoff marriage and this. And, I didn't want a wedding. Like neither time I didn't want a wedding. Because it's like, well, for one, I feel like there's so many other things that you could do to get your marriage to an, another level instead of going all out, having this big thing. Like, first, y'all got to last. That's first. Like, you're going to put all your money into this and you may be divorced in like the next year or two. Second thing is like, you putting all your money into this when you know when you know for sure it's going to be so many people here that don't care about neither one of y'all. Like, y'all inviting these people for a, a, to come to a show to see y'all. Like, this is not a show. Like, this is serious. And y'all not about to come in here, eat my food, go home and talk about what I had on. I just want this to be between me, my spouse, and God. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. That's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I got it. But then I started thinking like, now I'm thinking, we make it to year five. I do want to do something. Like I want to do something because not because society said that I should do this or because people think I should do this, whatever the case may be. It's for me. Like it's something that I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about it, but I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's important because that's something that you want to do. You don't have to feel the pressure <clears throat> like mm -hmm. Bryce Dilla or something like that. You know, you doing it because you want to, not because mm -hmm. you got people in your ear. Um, but that was that was important for us that we just got married and we didn't have <laughs> really nobody there. But it was beautiful, you know? Yes. And so. it made the moment feel like so much more special. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I told my wife, I said, I don't want nobody at, at our at our wedding who who doesn't agree with us because they asked that at the at the wedding right mm -hmm. <laughs> you know they asked does anyone you know so <laughs> you know what i'm saying so you know, i don't I, I need you i need you to be in agreement with me i don't need you to be hating against me at my wedding you know what i'm saying so, so can i ask you a question i know that you yeah. asked no you good go, go ahead we we talk so why didn't people want y'all to get married uh i don't know jerica if you know our backstory but for one okay i was going through a divorce and mm -hmm. then i met my wife on instagram Mm -hmm. So we got married in six months. We dated long distance. Um, it was just so many factors. Uh, people thought I was having a midlife crisis because they like you forty and this chick twenty eight. You know, so and then and then I know like some of them were thinking like on her end it was like a stability thing too. But as like I told you. When you love someone, you love them. It does not matter. And the crazy thing is, like, our stories, <laughs> our stories are so, so similar. Like, I got married to my husband now, like, maybe like a month or two after I got a divorce. No, it was a month. It was like, it wasn't even a full month. I got, I got married i got a divorce uh december 
21st. I got married January 4th. So today is my anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary. Yeah, that makes two of us. I don't even know if all my my uh the ink dried on a divorce paper because I was <laughs> I, I was it it took so long for her for my ex-wife to sign the paperwork. I spent so much money. And this was even before I met my wife, who I'm married to now. So this was going on even before her. And it took so long, Jerrica, for us. Because I literally got divorced and <laughs> remarried in the same year. <laughs> but I understand that. And people will understand, like, going through a divorce, you already be divorced before they tell you, yeah, you got the divorce. And I had to actually get my divorce by default because he would not show up. Mm -hmm. would not show up. And it would make me so mad. It's like we're constantly going through all of this fire like let's just end it but no like he was not letting me i was like you got, you got me in hell and not only hell like i'm in prison like come on free me yeah <laughs> and like people probably were like oh my god this not gonna work she ain't even healed long enough like for one i was already by myself before i even got divorced before i even got remarried like i was like, okay, I'm going to put this time in because I already had my mind up that I was going to get married again mm -hmm. because there was something that I really wanted. Like, mm -hmm. I couldn't get that with you. So it's not that I'm beating myself up about it, but I know my worth and I know that God is going to send me my husband regardless. Like, I'm, I'm still going to be a wife. Mm -hmm. So I, like, got married quick and... I was already going through my divorce. Yeah. Everything was already done. Mm -hmm. Only thing was he wasn't showing up. He knew yeah. about the divorce and everything. But I thought about the fault, like I said. So I definitely say that we our stories are so, 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 so similar. Yeah. Yep. Same thing. We were separated. And I met my uh, husband on Twitter. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. I met my wife on Instagram. That's, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I seen somebody <laughs> make a post, I mean, a tweet, like, um, don't date off of Twitter. So I'm like, oh, what y'all talking about? I don't know what happened with y'all's situation, but I, I, I've been with this man for, a while. like, he's from my past, so it'll make, like, 11 years off and on. Yeah. And, like, yeah. we, we made it, so... I say, uh, ain't nothing wrong with how, I'm going to be honest too, like some of us don't get out as much as we should. And even if we did, like social media is a thing for, for the world right now. I don't even got nothing to do with the generation. It gets for like, it's uh, on social media, you basically outside. So you going, you going to meet people on there. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Like my ex-husband i met him from facebook like mm -hmm. i'm <laughs> you know you yeah. can you know like you can spark up a good conversation with people from social media there's nothing okay. wrong with that like i don't yeah. care what nobody say like that's what all of us do so mm -hmm. oh yeah i've yeah i've met some i've met some amazing people on social media like okay. people that i've interviewed i mean people mm -hmm. that i stay in touch with people that i've interviewed I've, I've rebranded. What I'm doing now is a rebrand. I've been doing this since like 2012, 2013. Like I've been doing this for a long time. I just rebranded and I've actually brought people on my show who I've interviewed before the first time around. Mm -hmm. You know, so. So yes, you were all right. You were so sorry about that. Mm -hmm, yeah. So as we close the show, because we can go on and on because we just kicking it now. <laughs> In a tweet, you said, nobody is coming to save you, save yourself. Can you give us some context behind that tweet? Mm. When I first, honestly, when I first saw that as a question, it just made me like, I, I just couldn't do anything but tear up. Because when I tweeted that, that came from a really, really deep emotional place. Um, for the year of 2022, it just really gave me an eye opener. 
um, I went through so many different things. Like I was up so many times and then I got knocked back down. And I started like questioning myself, like, God, what am I doing wrong? Like, I don't do nobody wrong. I try to live right. So what am I doing? I got a lot of things that I wanted, like, <clears throat> but then the uh, the things that I wanted, like, like they fell through. So what is going on? And I found myself so many times, like just alone, like I'm a very, I'm a very selfish person because I didn't want to like put that burden on other people. And when I say save yourself, it's not that you won't have anybody around you that want to be there for you or to help lift you up, but it's like life be life and for everybody. So you really just have to lift your own head up, know that you're going to get through the things that you're going through. If God brought you to it, he's going to carry you out of it. Like, I left my hometown. I moved to Georgia. That was, like, the end of 2021. And I'm like, this going to be a great start for me. This going to work. Like, yeah. let's see let's see what they're like. So, 2022, it wasn't all that bad. Like, I got two jobs that I always wanted. I, when, I, when I first got to Georgia, like, like the next month I had a job. I was working through the agency. Like everybody liked my work ethic. So the uh, my supervisor through the agency, she paid for me to take a class, like to take a course. So they're right there like, this showed me like, okay, you got skills, girl. People see what you got going on. So, okay, come on, let's do it. Like that right there shocked me. Cause I ain't never had, like I've had people do good things for me, but just out the blue like that, somebody that I don't even know and the course was it was like five hundred dollars so that really kind of like blew my mind and i worked for a doctor's office and there was something that i wanted to do back in my hometown but i didn't get a chance to so i was able to experience that in georgia and if you're ever in lawrenceville georgia i highly recommend parasail like everybody there treated me so so good so good and um, going back to my my course that I took, um, my instructor, uh, Miss Rachel, she was so, I know that she was highly connected with spirit, universe, whoever. She was connected, very deeply connected because she will always be watching me in the class. And she told me, she was like, I know who going to pass and who gonna feel already just by looking at y'all and she she always would be looking at me though and I'll be like girl okay is you reading me <laughs> and so she just would be looking at me and she would like she would hear them like well let's get in the group study and she'll be looking at me and she told me she was like you thrive better alone than you do in a group and I was like okay let me stay by myself I passed, like, I got my certificate, all of that. She was so proud of me. Like, she, I didn't even ask her to do this for me or nothing. She just grabbed me by my hands and she started praying for me. And that sent chills to me. Like, I, I promise I probably hugged her for about maybe longer than a minute. Like, it, it sent chills to me. And when I say, like, God sent so many messages through people straight from him to me that, even through all the things I went through, like the last couple of months of living in Georgia, I ended up having to go and stay at a hotel. Like, so I got the two jobs that I wanted, but the job that I want, like all my money was going to these rooms, you know? Mm -hmm. So it just, it just got to a point where it's like, oh my God, like nobody, it got so bad for me to the point where I, I was just so vulnerable around whoever. Like, that's how broke down I was. And I just, I just really felt like I was not going to make it out of my situation. But something just told me, like, don't give up. Something just told me, like, don't give up. Like, you really have to save yourself. Like, every day, get up, you know, talk to God. Like, this is going to be, like, you're going to make it through this. And also, like, 
a person when they say like people that you don't even expect that will be there for you like somebody that i thought that would never come through for me came through for me and that changed my mind also like okay you're not a messed up person like you know it's, it's still people that really want to see you win or see you do better and it wasn't that i wasn't doing good but it just made me feel like uh like i wasn't doing enough and i knew at that moment like you gotta take off from here because nobody coming to help you nobody coming to save you you gotta get up you gotta do this yourself like lift yourself up it's gonna be hard but i promise you have it in you to lift yourself up and every day that's something that i always work on it's like lift myself up i just told somebody like you know what? i went through so much in 2022 i won i lost i cried this year like god if you play me i told her i said we're gonna have to go out in the middle of the street and we're gonna have to have a boxing match because like god what is your beef with me so yes like definitely and you always have to have like a plan another plan like that saved me too like when i saw stuff about to crash i was moving like okay this about to this is about to go down so you need to jump to the next thing and every time i jump to the next thing like i was right like that was crashing so boom and i, I when i promise you i landed i landed so many times but like i said i lost a lot too so yeah save yourself y'all <laughs> no that's real that's that's real talk because i've i've been taught that as a kid you know my mom you know the calvary ain't coming <laughs> you know and that's not saying that god will abandon us but sometimes we can feel alone um because he's never you know never left us nor forsake us you know so i'm grateful for that um powerful testimony can you tell us a little bit about your business before uh, we leave and let everyone know how they can get in touch with you as well. <laughs> all right. So you all, uh, a lot of people think that my name is Celeste, but it's not. My name is Jerica. Celeste Lior is my business that I started. Um, it is French for Heavenly Glow. I started my business to honor my aunt and my cousin. Um, I was very, very close with them. So like, I did not want them to just die in vain. I want or pass away in vain. I wanted to do something to always be able to remember them, but things changed when I had my son. Um, he is a very big inspiration of my business. I also have two daughters, but um, my son, like his skin was very different from ours. Um, he, he has had eczema for, well, I want to say since he came out, but <laughs> his skin was very different from the girls. So I would have like people recommending certain things like doctors recommending certain products and none of that worked. So I made my own and I use it on my baby. And when I say he, he had like little splotches here and there, but nothing compared to what he was at first. And when I saw that it worked for him, I was like, oh my God. I'm a, like, I already had a plan, but I was like, well, I'm gonna put this out here and see what it do. Like, I was scared, but um, the spa that uh, my husband got me for Christmas, which I had said that on Twitter too, um, she is black owned and she's been in her business for 25 years. I, her energy was so big that I was like, she gotta be the owner. So I started asking her questions and she was like, um, if you have a dream, you have a plan, like you wanna start a business, do it scared and that was something that I did like I was scared I didn't know it was gonna work but so many people had gave me so many compliments and tried it and it worked for them so I was like let me keep doing it um but that's not enough I'm going to keep going and uh keep getting better um so like I said y'all can find me on Instagram at Celeste or LLC or you can also find my website as well at www.com Celeste or LLC.com so yes Awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been a powerful segment. Um, I'm grateful that we had this opportunity to converse. We have so much in common. <laughs> uh, Jerica, I want to acknowledge you for uh, being transparent, for being honest about your story, because you never know who can be listening or watching. So I want to acknowledge you for that and, and acknowledge you for stepping out in faith and starting your business. 
um, and Thank doing this skin. I want to do the same. <laughs> I want to do the same for you. And like I told you um, <laughs> prior to this um, podcast here, this episode, um, when I told you, like, I never opened up to anybody about this. So when I saw the topic, it was like, God was like, do it, you know talk about it because you never talk about it and I never want to talk about it because for one I don't want people to feel like I'm holding on to the past Mm -hmm. no I'm able to talk about it because I don't live there anymore Mm -hmm. and it's something that you know I can talk about now like this could be a part of my testimony I may not have been able to give you detail but I know God has some doing when you put that top with that post up there and I saw it like yeah let me let me say my let me speak my piece (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. Well, you heard it here, Brave Arts community. Make sure that you go follow Jericho on social media and you pick up her products as well. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this video with a friend. If you're listening via a podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I would appreciate that so much. By doing so, I'll put you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. So leave those rating and reviews there. This is Sean Heineman with special guests. Jerrica. All right, Brave (laughs) Hearts community. (laughs) Take care.